What's up everybody? My name is Joshua. We are a Bold Follower and that was a couple clips from our very first ever Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights chasing. We actually found them. So we wanted to share with you all of our tips and tricks so you might be able to find and photograph one of nature's most beautiful phenomenon. Not just that, we're going to take you with us on our very first ever Aurora Borealis chase road trip and then because we're Bold Follower, we're going to share with you guys some takeaways and some thoughts uh, and important reflections from the trip. So you ready? Let's go. So what creates an aurora? Using very simple terms. Well, if the sun creates a spot, it might shoot some energy into space. If that energy is pointed towards Earth and has enough strength to reach Earth, it might get sucked in by the gravitational pull near one of the poles. If that energy reaches our atmosphere, it can energize the molecules it comes in contact with. And those molecules can light up in various shapes, sizes, and colors for a specific variation of time, all depending on how powerful the factors leading up to it were in that particular hemisphere that it entered. But it's not enough to simply have an aurora. You have to be able to see them too. Ideally, it doesn't hurt to be around an equinox and or close to the climax of an 11 year solar cycle. Lucky for you, that's 2025, so chances are pretty good for the next few years. And to be as north as you can get. Though you can see them below the 45th parallel, if the storm is big enough, it's safer to be above that longitude line so you can see even the smaller storm. It also helps to be dark and away from light pollution, which includes moonlight with ideally little or no cloud coverage. And that's just a list of 13 different factors. And there's a ton of other factors and a lot that goes into each one of those factors. I didn't want to get into because I didn't want to get too complicated. Uh, but just remember, there's always mystery and no guarantee with any Aurora. So sometimes you could have all the factors lining up and see nothing. And sometimes you could have none of the factors lining up and still see something. Um, but it does help to be informed. And with that is a bunch of apps that track all the things I mentioned. Um, but the recommendation I have is to join a group. I, we have a Facebook group called the Michigan Aurora Chasers. I'm sure there's similar ones to wherever you're near. And the experts that are in that group will post their thoughts after analyzing the data themselves. And it, trust me, it's better to go off their understanding than your own and the apps because there's a lot that goes on and sometimes they're not accurate. There's a whole hoo-ha behind that. But again, it is never an exact science. Take everything anybody says with a grain of salt. Ultimately, you are just making a calculated risk and an educated gamble because even if conditions were perfect when they posted or when you read the app or when you saw the report, it still could change between the time that you read it and go outside. So that being said, you should be prepared to go outside all night because if you're gonna film them, you have to catch them. And often an Aurora is only out for a few minutes in just one little spot. Um, it, we picture, the, you know, Alaska and it lighting up the sky, but that's really not realistic. Do not go out there with that expectation or more often than not, you will be disappointed. Set your expectation correct. So a lot of times um, you don't even know what's happening unless you're pointed in the right direction, usually lower in the northern sky and you know exactly what to look for because the majority of the time, if you see anything, it's going to be a real faint glow. Um, with the naked eye. It almost looks like a greenish haze or like a light cloud in the distance. It moves very slowly, if at all. Um, honestly, you probably have seen them and missed them if you didn't know exactly what you're looking for. Um, underwhelming? Well, yeah. Uh, but your camera still might pick something up. Now, when I say camera, I'm going to talk about phone camera. I'm not going to get into all the details of uh, other cameras. But just make sure it has a high ISO value. Um, 1800 or 3200 works for me, but there's others that could work as well. Make sure it has a low aperture. These are just some recommendations, maybe f2.2 to f4, a slow shutter speed and a tripod. Oh, and probably you're going to want to bring an extra battery. Now, um, as long as your phone is newer than 2020, like an iPhone 11, uh, level or newer, just set it on, tr on a tripod with night mode automatic and, and you sh should be able to catch great photos. 
Of course, the newer the phone, the better. Now to take video, you, you're either gonna need a succession of photos back to back like this. These are just a bunch of photos smushed together or record the screen like this. It's not the most articulate or defined image, but it definitely works and captures a little more um, than the pictures do sometimes. What about uh, photo editing? My personal preference is not to tweak the colors too much because it doesn't take much for those to look fake. So um, most of all I do is decrease the exposure a little bit to pop the stars and then I increase the sharpness and definition so the movement's a little more clear. But like I said, it's really just preference. As long as you like it, that's really what matters. Well, you remember that Facebook group I talked about? Well, we saw a post that there might be uh, small storms producing the Aurora on Thursday and Friday. And so my beautiful wife decided to treat me to an early birthday present, a road trip with the family to try and catch them. So uh, because the Aurora are unpredictable, as I mentioned, uh, we decided to go on Thursday because the weather was nicer so we could do some pit stops with the kids and enjoy ourselves. And, but we found the official 45th parallel marker for the majority of the smaller storms. As long as you are above this line, you should be able to see them. Okay, so we finally made it to our room in the Upper Peninsula, and it is gorgeous right there, because that's my beautiful mm -hmm. wife, but also over there. So we're gonna camp out here and hope that you can see them. Now, the guy downstairs said that you could not see them because of the light pollution, but if it's a big enough storm, you would be able to. And since we got little kids, um, definitely don't have other options. So let's hope the storm's big enough. Okay, so remember all those apps that I talked about? They kept giving me notifications and notifications. Some of the factors lined up and then all the factors lined up and then those factors that lined up, oh man, became huge factors. It just blew up. The whole Facebook page was blowing up all around us in every single direction all night. Basically, most people had never seen a storm like that. In fact, even the newscaster said it's five years since a storm like that hit. Actually, it's one of the strongest solar storms to hit uh, the planet in about at least five years. Almost everyone who stayed awake till around midnight when the storm really escalated to that G4 um, stated that it was one of, if not the greatest show of their entire lives. These are veteran chasers and locals who know what to look for and have been doing this for a long time. And take a listen to a fellow chaser who ironically came up from Chicago just like us and happened to hit the jackpot with this storm. See some little lights. My first pictures are so piddly. I go, oh, 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 lights, lights. And then all of a sudden it came at us in streaks. It came over us. And I'm, I'm, I can't even talk. And then it starts pulsating, pulsating. So we, it was just pulsating over us. So we laid on the ground. We got to sleep in. We laid and we looked up because we could see five, uh, like, I don't know if it's a crown, what you just called it, but it was over us. Like, I said, I'm going to believe this. It was just, it was just un freaking believable. And it's fantastic. Best thing I have ever seen. I've seen little of them all over the horizon, but I didn't know it was like this. This is fantastic. Come here, Tommy. <laughs> this is our 20-year oh, so anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Oh, wait, hold on. Now, what's the secret to 20 years? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yes, dear. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The lights um, just topped everything. I'm so glad you got up here to see this. And this is coming. This is it's coming as ready, ready, and then bam, bam, bam. It's These are completely unedited, unedited photos. Yes, and they're just coming at it. And I, I just... And that's, then that thing came, and that's when it went over us and did that swirly tie-dye thing. Whoa. And I just was like, this is just unreal. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. 
When we were looking out at the aurora and the lights dancing, uh, it made me think of when God said, let there be light. You see, when I used to imagine that, I used to imagine it as just a big flash, boom, God spoke and boom, it was all, it was all light everywhere in an instant. But now I imagine a slow, winding, beautiful rainbow pulsating and twirling and dancing across the galaxies as it paints the canvas of the universe with bright splashes and light in all different hues and colors. A display that continues today in every aurora, but not just in aurora, but also in the sunsets and the sunrises and the puffy clouds and anything else that we're willing to see the beauty in. Because it wasn't enough for God to create beautiful things like this phenomenon of the Aurora Northern Lights, but he created us in part to share in that beauty of creation with him. I just encourage you, if this is on your bucket list, you're anywhere in the United States that it's a, a reasonable drive, do the drive try find your place we went to the upper peninsula of michigan but you can really go anywhere and go ahead and see god's handiwork of just lighting up the sky it is beautiful you will never regret it thank you for watching thank you for coming thank you for commenting subscribing everything we love you guys bless you guys go in the peace of god